So a common question that many of you have been searching for on the website is how to create a three by three grid in CSS. So I figure in this video, let's just jump right into the code and take a look at not just how to create a three by three grid, but to create grids of arbitrary sizes. But we'll start with three by three first and then we'll explore the other parts later. All right, so what I have going for me here is I have VS Code on the left hand side, then I have the browser on the right hand side and they're both open to the same document. So any changes I'll make here, I'll refresh, and you'll see it in a moment. So now, right now, the page is empty. There's nothing going on here. The code file's empty, and which is why when I look in the browser, nothing's being displayed. So let's go ahead and fix that by starting to add our boilerplate HTML. In VS Code, it's a handy shortcut for any HTML file. Just start with the exclamation mark, hit enter. The basics of what you'll need to start your HTML document is created for you. So let's call this one three by three grid, save it, let's refresh this page, and you'll see that three by three grid is on the title of the document as well, which just kind of shows that this is the same document we have open on both sides. All right, so the way we're gonna do this is, I'm gonna first just create the basic scaffolding of our page, which is gonna have like some minor stylistic changes to make it look like something that wasn't just like created for without any care in the world. And so we'll start with that. And then we'll go and create the content that we'll then lay out into our grid itself. So for the HTML, it's gonna be fairly straightforward. I'm gonna add a heading one element. Heading one element, it's gonna be called a three by three grid. Fresh save, fresh to page, yep, shows up here. And then I'm gonna now add the HTML for all the items that we want to ultimately display. Now I did kind of say that I wanna style it first, but let's start with the content, we'll style it afterwards. So for a three by three grid, that means you have three rows and three columns, which means that there are nine individual cells that our content can live into. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna specify grid div class equals parent. This will be the outer container for all of our children. You know, we could even call this a grid, but let's call it parent for now to kind of keep that parent child naming, which is very common on the web. So now I'm gonna div one, and I'm gonna these child divs, we're gonna have nine of them. So I'm just gonna write, create one, copy this, and just paste it nine times. Three, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. All right, and let's give, give them a unique number just so we know what we are looking at. Seven, eight, nine. All right, let's refresh this page. You'll now see that, let me zoom in a bit. You'll now see our nine items are currently displayed here. Let me zoom in a bit on our code editor as well, just so you can see a little bit more on screen. So now the task ahead of us is how do we make these nine elements show up in a simple three by three kind of an arrangement with three rows and three columns. So first of all, this is where styling is gonna come in. So first let's do some styles to just get the page looking somewhat decent. Right now it's way too plain. So do body margin 30 pixels, give it some nice you know breathing room between all of the edges and corners it has. For heading one element, let's get a font size of 72 pixels and font family is sans serif, okay? Yep, so much bigger and everything is more kind of bold. Let me zoom it out a bit just so we can create more room. And then the next thing we're gonna do is let's go ahead and start thinking about the columns and rows that are gonna make up our grid itself. So the way we're gonna do this is by there actually first, let me say, historically, there have been many ways for being able to arrange uh, a, a stack of divs into rows and columns. But the way we're gonna be doing this is by using the, the more modern approach. We're gonna be using the grid layout container. So the CSS grid, you might have heard about it for quite some time. We're gonna use that to make this task, which was often, you know, a fair amount of CSS, just into maybe into some one or two lines of CSS instead. So it's actually a really great way of being able to do this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and define our parent, which is the parent development that we have right here. And let me, there's some warnings, that's an empty rule set, let me ignore that for now, parent. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say display grid. That tells the, our browser that what we're gonna be treating the parent element as is gonna be using the grid layout rules. And then I'm gonna do grid gap. You know, in between each of our cells, I wanna have a gap of, you know, let's say 10 pixels. And the next thing is gonna be grid template columns and I'm gonna put 150 pixels, 150 pixels 
150 pixels. Now what this does is it essentially specifies that all of our content will be in three columns whose width will be 150 pixels, 150 pixels, and 150 pixels. Let me just refresh the page right now. And once I've done that, you can now see that all of our content is now appearing in terms of these three columns. Now, let's make this columns look a little bit nicer. Right now, they're pretty plain, which makes it very difficult to see exactly where one column ends and begins. So let me give it a padding of 10 pixels, background color will be hashtag EFC B68. I didn't memorize it, I have my notes right below, so you can kind of see what I'm talking about here. Let me check the page. You can now see that you know we have three columns that are currently displayed appropriately. Now, if our goal was just to create a grid with you know with nine items like this, we're done. I you know you grid template columns, specify the, the three column width that you care about, and then you have a grid that automatically does it. But we're gonna go a little further though. For example, this grid looks nice. But ideally, I want to have the height be the same as the width itself. And there, again, as in all things on the web, there are a billion ways to do this. But because we already use grid template columns to pull this off, I'm going to do grid template rows and specify the same exact behavior of 150 pixels, 150 pixels, and 150 pixels, which basically now says that our height of our rows will be 150 pixels as well. And once I've done that, notice that you'll now see that we now have a grid that is made up of squares. They're square shaped. They have the full width that is appropriately specified in width and height. So, so the border is five pixels, just to give it a like round corner. So all the typical CSS things you could do, you can still do right now. The only difference is by using a grid, they follow typical grid style rules. And so next up, let's talk about the content itself. It being a top left corner, that's default behavior. Wouldn't it be great if all these numbers were actually centered on the middle of our, each of our cells as well? Let's go ahead and fix that. So I'm gonna go ahead and specify as grid within our div itself. Display grid. I'm using a handy dandy place items property to center all these items into it. And now you can see all the items are now centered. Let's go ahead and just make some minor changes. Font family sans serif font size 24 pixels and font weight bold. I'm basically just formatting the content inside of it. So now I can see our three by three grid actually looks a lot more stylish and looks more proper. Now there is more we can do here, but you can kind of see like if we had, for example, 16 pieces of content, all we would do is duplicate all of this. And let me just get seven of these going 9 10 11 12 13 14 not 7 14 14 15 and 16 if I just doing this with 16 items with specifying a 3 by 3 grid if I hit refresh notice what you see here by default you get a very similar stylistic treatment where our, you know, we get the padding with the background color applied, but it's by no means displayed as a, as a grid. And the solution here is to essentially just add a few, add an extra row, add an extra column, 150px. And if I do all this refresh, you'll now see that our three by three grid is now a four by four grid, but we now have 16 items displayed. Now, there's one last thing I wanna talk about before we end this here, because you know we covered a lot of very basic concepts when it comes to CSS and using the grid and centering content and all of that. There's a lot of new ways of simplifying some of the syntax that was introduced in CSS that grid really takes advantage of. So for example, instead of typing in 150 pixels each time for each column that we want, especially because they're all the same value, I can use the handy repeat syntax. So repeat, four times and each value will be 150 pixels. Similarly, I'm gonna just copy this value, paste this here, type in repeat, four, in this case rows, each with a value of 150 pixels, hit refresh, same exact behavior you'll see here. What this means is that if I were to, let's say for example, we to reduce the size of all these things, just 100 pixels, I can do so and refresh, and now you can see just the 100 pixel width squares whose height and width are 100 pixels. So with that, let's go ahead and wrap things up. In this really quick video, we covered 
a lot of concepts really around how to lay out content with the grid. The grid is probably one of the more interesting new things that came into CSS just after Flexbox that makes laying out content on the web really simple and very powerful as well. Things that would have taken a lot of effort, especially to make it look right, make it look right across all the browsers and make it responsive and so on. The grid is simplified. And so hopefully this video that highlighted how to create a three by three grid and then ultimately a four by four grid using just our CSS grid techniques was pretty helpful for you. And if not, feel free to let me know on form.com where I and others would be happy to not just hear your feedback on what you think could be made better about this, but if you have any questions on how to do your own interesting CSS things using the complicated syntax that often is web development, you know, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript in concert, doing all the, the things that make it so difficult sometimes and fun and rewarding at the same time as well. And if you like this video, tell your friends and enemies all about it. Let them know that there's a cool video on web development topics that you check out. Hit subscribe to be notified of new videos that I'll be regularly posting. Follow me at Krupa on Twitter for regular bite-sized updates. And you can follow me at Krupa on other networks as well, but I use Twitter the most these days for sharing out updates on things. Lastly, if you enjoy reading content, I have a handful of books on a variety of front-end development topics reading both paperback and Kindle editions. So take a look at them, link in the video below, check it out. And with that, I will see you all next time.